Okay. So first of all, welcome everyone. It's it's a it's a pleasure and honor. Is this needed? No, not Does this make a difference. Are we okay without? Maybe I need this. Maybe. Okay. So so um, so welcome. Uh, uh, we're we're very pleased to host all of you here. And and what's uh, in my mind, I, I think the the main uh, benefit of of this event is the fact that this is an important step in community building. And, and we're not only building a local community, we're building an international community. Um, and, and I think that this is very important um, from a regulatory perspective. And, and people may not necessarily connect between community and regulation, but, but at least in my approach or my view, there is a connection. So just by way of introduction, I, I am the head of the Financial Regulation Capital Market Department here uh, at Barnell. We are a law firm, uh, mid-size. I think it's a legal team of, of probably a little more than 100 people. So we work with startups and we have uh, uh, real estate and employment law and tax. And of course, people like the fund definitely in Israel, so we have litigation. Um, and and I, as, as I said, work with, with uh, uh, financial regulation companies, and we do a lot of work in the FinTech sp space, and something that, that is very near and dear to us. When we talk about financial regulation, it's important to know, definitely when we're talking about different jurisdictions and different countries, that financial regulation models are not identical in different places. Okay, in Israel, for example, we have what we call a functional regulatory model. So basically the, the, the public money, or the public assets, are in three places. They're in the capital markets, they're in the banks, and they're in insurance and pension funds. So we have three regulators, one responsible for each uh, uh, industry. But in Singapore, for example, there's, it's a different map model. There, you have a unified uh, uh, regulator where basically the, the country is saying, at, at the end of the day, all three uh, or all various forms of financial regulation um, need to work together. They need to, they need to live uh, uh, peacefully uh, one with each other and therefore we'll have one regulator. Let me give you a small, real-life example of, of a clash between regulators. I was, and this, I, I forgot to <coughs> confess this, this uh, part of, of my, my dark past, I was the head of enforcement at the Israel Securities Authority, uh, um, uh, this one, uh, for a number of years. And I was there in 2008 and 2009, and uh, um, the students here may not recall, but people that are um, a little older remember that in 2008 and 2009, uh, the world experienced a global credit crisis. Okay, it started from subprime uh, uh, MBSs in the United States and the ripple effects. And when we talk about financial regulation, one of the main risks is what we call systemic risk. It's the ripple effects, and this affected, impacted the whole world. Literally the whole world. And one of our banks, now in Israel we have five major banks, and all of those banks are also public companies because they issue shares to the public. So they have reporting obligations because they are public companies, and they have Regulation, that is banking regulation, that is what we call prudential. It's the regulation for banks. It's, it's, it's the Armageddon, or what, what a regulator wants to prevent, is the collapse of a bank. The, the regulator that is responsible for public companies, I'll, I'll be a bit cynical, doesn't care if a company will, will collapse, but it wants to prevent a collapse by surprise. So the whole idea is that the public knows that a company is failing, or a company is in a bad state, so that if and when it collapses, then that was no surprise. And one of the Israeli banks in 2008 uh, bought a whole chunk of subprime bonds. Okay, and for those that don't understand what I'm talking about, they substituted real money 
with garbage, okay? Now, at a certain point, they thought that the garbage, right, when you take the garbage out, it's in a bag, so it's, there's, you know, if there's bulk there, and it sometimes weighs something, and you may say, you know, it may weigh like a bag full of dollar bills, right? So it's worth something, that bag. But well, let's get to put it into the composer to yeah, get something out of it. That, that's also true. That's also true. That's right. That's innovation. Nice. Uh, uh, but it's also, but it also could be just, just like uh, uh, worthless uh, uh, garbage. And, and one of the Israeli banks, in particular, bought a little too much of this uh, garbage. And in their financial reports, they disclosed to the public that they have. Uh, um, capital, equity, they have money in their vaults. And they counted money and they counted those bags of garbage. And because those bags of garbage had value. But when the crisis hit, suddenly the value of those bags shrunk. How much? Dramatically. By hundreds of millions of shekels. Okay? Now, we at the Israel Securities Authority, I was the head of enforcement at the Israel Securities Authority, we learned about this and we reached out to the banks and we said, you are, you are a, to the bank, and we said, you're a public company, you need to disclose this to the public. This is material information, this is crucial for an investor to know. What did the bank do? It ran to Mommy Bank of Israel, which is the supervisor of the bank. And the bank said, Mommy, Mommy, uh, Daddy wants us to disclose really bad information. And if we come out with that information, then what we're afraid of is a run on the bank. Did you all see Mary Poppins? Right, so in the middle, in the end of Mary Poppins, yeah. right, the little kid goes to the bank and they take away his tuppins and he starts shouting, give me my money back, give me my money back. And everyone at the bank suddenly understands that the money, the bank is taking money and not giving it back. So that's a whole big deal. And, and suddenly everyone is storming on the tellers and, and demanding their money back. Now, if that happens, a run on the bank, that's, you know, it, it, it may fill nicely in Mary Poppins, but that's a disaster for a bank because a bank doesn't have your money, okay, at every given point in time. It has a small portion. How much? Here you have re bank regulation that is responsible for, as I said, the prudential aspect. So it's 10%, 15%, 20% if it's a conservative bank. But 80% is out, working, okay, in, in basically in loans, okay, in credit. And but basically they went and they said to the Bank of Israel, you know, we can't disclose this information. And you have a real clash between regulators, each regulator responsible for a different aspect of financial regulation, but there's a clash. Now ultimately we worked it out, it was disclosed, but, uh, um, but this is just to, to, to demonstrate to you that, that the separation is not, you know, just craziness. Uh, just, just interesting to, to point out that I think that what the, the British did a long time ago, where they took all of their criminals, put them on boats, and shipped them to Australia, that <laughs> created an interesting uh, uh, country with out-of-the-box thinking. Um, and, and seriously, the Australians, by the way, in terms of financial regulation, are amazing. They're creative. They come up with different models. They're not part of global trends. And they came up with a different model of financial regulation that they call Twin Peaks. It's basically two regulators. One that is responsible for disclosure. So anything and anyone that needs to be supervised with disclosure in mind will be under that regulator. And prudential regulation is under the other. So it's banks, insurance companies, for example, which we want to, we don't want them to collapse. So, so financial regulation, when we say that, there are different models, there are different ways of doing it. It makes life complicated. Now, uh, um, obviously, when we're talking about fintech, we're talking about uh, a technology that is in some way disrupting our financial systems. And here I can tell you that, for example, in Israel, the, the, the law that regulates financial advice 
okay? Investment advice. Had the legislator had, had a paradigm, and that paradigm was someone going to the bank, sitting in front of an advisor. The advisor is very proud of his license from the Israel Securities Authority that is uh, uh, on the wall, and the advisor does a lot of work and reads uh, analyst reports and is able to provide <clears throat> specific advice to a client. But in the world that we're living in now, with big data abilities, with, with AI abilities, you have companies that can take not the three, four, five analyst reports that this advisor read and is now able to advise their clients, but you have companies that can take thousands of analyst reports and analyze them and be able to track and see which analysts are, are get things right statistically and which don't, and based on that are able to say, to point on the winners, I and mean, we're talking about mind-boggling things that technology enables. So this completely disrupts everything. It turns the law in Israel that is from 1995 into a, a useless piece of legislation because it's, it doesn't relate to, in 1995, many people didn't have email accounts, okay? Let alone smartphones. So, so this is, so we have this extremely disruptive technology happening. And on the other hand, we have regulators, and I'm, I'm an ex-regulator, so I know what that means. And this is just to show you, and, 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 and some of the speakers here address this. Both Israel and Singapore have uh, uh, quite a lot in common. We're among the top 15 in the world in terms of, of uh, 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 fintech companies and, and fundraising for those industries. So there's a lot. There's a lot in common, and I'm not going to repeat what was uh, uh, said before. Yeah, yeah. So what I want to do is talk about the challenges. There are a number of challenges, okay? Cybersecurity and difficulty in attracting investors. But there is one main challenge for FinTech, and that is regulatory uncertainty. And when we're talking about regulatory uncertainty, we're talking about two prongs, two levels of regulatory uncertainty. One local. We have, we are developing, a company develops technology and it doesn't know how the local regulator will react to it. Sometimes local regulation is not set to address these things because this is so innovative that no one ever foresaw this. I had one company that I work with that developed uh, um, a system based on artificial intelligence. So this is uh, a machine learning process where each day comes up with, with recommendations for investment. And we, we were able to get them a license from the Israel Securities Authority for provision of investment advice. And what the Israel Securities Authority does is uh, when the advice is provided through uh, digital or electronic means, it requires that there's going to be an individual license holder, licensee in the company, and that that person can sort of predict, understand what the system does. So that there's like this quality check of, of a person. It's, it's, it's like when I was in the Army, I was in a, in a unit that does navigation. And when we got GPS, it was like we didn't know how to, how to treat these things. So we continued navigating according to the stars and our compass, but, uh, it was, it was, but someone was always there with the GPS to make sure that we know what we're doing. So it's like they don't know how to, how to deal with this thing. And, and they came over to visit and they, they asked the license uh, holder, can you explain to us the system? And the license holder said no, because it was developed by PhD experts in, in the Weizmann Institute, and I know nothing about artificial intelligence. And I can't predict what this thing, no human can predict what this thing does. So, so the regulation that the Israel Securities Authority came up with is irrelevant. And, and my former colleagues from the regulator, at, after the meeting, they were like, boy, we wish we would have known about this company before we, we published the guidance, because the guy, now we're idiots. Because it, it doesn't make sense. So we have local regulation that is a challenge, but we have an even bigger challenge. 
because for fintech companies, you're not thinking about, we're not talking about the investor coming in and sitting in the bank face to face with the service provider. The fintech companies of the world are, they want to approach the citizens of the world. They want to approach everyone. The problem is that financial regulation, almost by definition, is a geographical exercise. It's a country by country issue. And when we're talking about financial, uh, uh, when we're talking about fintech, <coughs> this is a huge problem. It's a huge gap. Because what it does is it, it, it forces fintech companies to try to come up with with solutions, and, and that's a problem. Now, specifically, when we're talking about, uh, um, there, there are a number of things. So for example, we have European passporting, so that gives us a region as opposed to a country. Thank God for that. We have dual listing, which we have with uh, Singapore, where Israel, the Israeli legislator, recognized the financial regulation regime in Singapore, and if you have a company traded in Singapore and you want to list those securities in Israel, the Israeli regulator is going to take a step back so that a company won't have two regulators eating their brains off, but only one. And that's, that's a huge thing. But the real solution will come from global regulation. Now, today, when I say this, I sound crazy. Okay? It's utopian. But, and this is how I see this, this is our mission, okay? The community sitting here needs to, we're, we're disruptive in the technologies that we do, but we need to be disruptive also when it comes to the, regu the regulatory model. And we need to change it. The regulators, they're going to respond. They're not going to initiate anything, but they're going to respond if there's a real strong, steady, rational voice advocating for this. And I and in my mind, and this is what I wanted to this is this is the reason I wanted to speak to you. Because this in my mind, this is it's almost a responsibility of this community to to voice that objective. This is what we want. We want regulators, and you should know it's not very difficult. I was a regulator, I know. Instead of sitting and trying to invent regulation, one regulator needs to talk to the other, and they need to reach mutual recognition agreements. That's what they need to do. And then you have an Israeli company that Israel has a, a, a mutual recognition agreement with the UK, and automatically, whatever, if I'm licensed in Israel, I'm licensed in the UK. If I'm licensed in Israel, I'm licensed in Singapore. If I'm licensed in Israel, I have Europe also. And then we're, we're capturing the, the real potential of fintech. And with that utopian but hopefully optimistic message, I'll leave you to uh, the rest of you. I want to permission. First of all, I want to say that it was a brilliant lecture. <laughs> and, and I want to say a, a, just a sentence. Okay, please. A, a, one thing, 80% of the world population are not able to participate in, in the game of fintech and investment as well. And, and I think that this, something is this really saying. The, I think we should put into the thinking also the, some of the social thinking. Because I'm thinking the thinking, fintech is able to get finance uh, 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 measurements and uh, finance uh, abilities to the other part of the large part of the world that are, are not able to, to participate. I, I completely in, agree with in, you. In our it's shifting, it's moving power to the people. You're right. I think, and I think it's shifting power. Bear in mind that we are lucky, and it's best of us that we give some of the luckies to all other of the world, just the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.